Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at Asuka Models US Medium Tank M4A1 Sherman Direct Vision Type. So this is the A1 variant of Sherman. Quickly and easiest way to identify that is the sweeping or the graceful sweep on the hull as M4A1 was a cast design. It's also got the very early pattern boogies that we are more familiar with seeing with the M3 Lee and Grant. So this kit was once a Tasca kit, and if I were to pick this away, there would probably be a Tasca logo underneath that. And let's have a look-see in the box and see what we get. So beginning with the instructions. So it's a format that we're very well used to. It's, it's quite reminiscent of a Tamiya instruction sheet. And after all, this is a Japanese company too, so they are going to be somewhat influenced by each other, I'd imagine. So again, we start off with the tracks. Tracks are final rubber band style. Um, there are aftermarket available. So the buggies are totally workable. They come with small little rubber um, pads that you're meant to cut by 4mm by 10mm and you place them in and then they'll actually articulate individually as the real buggy system works. And you can actually see the unusual buggy arrangement. So these are the very early buggy um, configurations. Instead of having the return roller on its own arm that sweeps out from the back of the buggy, it's actually centered to the top and this is quite... Um, We've seen this before with M3, Grant and Lee. So then we come on to step seven. Again, hopefully you guys can see. Step seven is the assembly of the hull. Quite a bit um, in this to do here. So do take your time putting these in as it's an individual plate construction. And uh, if you don't align your parts correctly, it could cause you trouble down the line. Step eight is our, our air cleaners. Then we go down to our engine access panels again. Very nice detail here. Then our transmission, our cast transmission cover. And we start moving on to the hull. Step 11 is upper hull um, mounting places. 12 is where we mount upper and lower hulls and transmission together. Pretty nice detail, I have to say. It's pretty. Um, these are really well engineered kits. They're they're, they're not over the top like some of Dragon's um, um, kind of uh, Panzer IV series, for example, or they're not under engineered like a lot of Tamiya kits. So they're, they're the perfect kind of middle ground. Good detail, but relatively low power count. It's a, it's a nice mix. Uh, 13 are the hatches, 14 are the engine exhaust and engine vents that have a full wedge piece and then an armoured cover goes over it. 15 mounting mounting the lights and uh, fenders and a few other small bits and pieces, the hatches and what have you. And one, another nice thing about these instructions is they are not very busy. 17 is mounting of the Pioneer tools. 18, um, 18 is the mounting of... Um, our buggies, our tracks, so they're not too busy stepped. You know, you probably get through this build pretty quickly, um, even in an afternoon, I'd say. There's not a lot in these. Two power barrel doesn't bother me. Um, there's not a muzzle brake on these, so these are very easy to um, recover. Just, um, I recommend using something like Vallejo water based putty, run it across the seam, dip your finger in water, and just wipe. And what'll happen is you'll actually just. Um, you wipe away all of the putty except the stuff in the seam and doesn't leave any residue on top of that. Maybe a light sanding if you're a bit unsure and there you have it, the barrel's ready to go. No need for aftermarket barrels. 20 is Commander Cupola stuff, uh, hatches and the uh, shell ejection port on the side of the hull. This, since this is a very early M4A1, um, they still had no omitted these or filled these in with welds um, as they were later, on, later discovered to be quite naturally um, an armour weakness because you know you just put a big door on the side of your armour so these are tended to be welded shut and filled with weld flux to try to strengthen them up in later variants. Our 0.550 calibre machine gun very nicely detailed on this uh, you can actually have spare barrels if you want you can take the barrel off uh, comes with two barrel types one with the carry handle and one without um, dust cover can be lifted and closed or the feeding tray. We get a couple of boxes of ammunition and we get the, um, the early 50 round drum 
that's quite synonymous with the real early pattern of um, Sherman. We also get some ammunition belts. Uh, these are solid piece. We'll have a look, see if these are any good. And then we get a spare barrel, which is kind of cool. I like the fact that they give us a spare barrel. 22. Um, so turret details. We're putting our lifting rings. We're mounting the turret ring to the actual upper part of the turret. Uh, is this a low bustle or a high bustle? I'll have to actually have a look at the kit itself. I think it should be a low bustle. Adding our aiming fane. Um, adding the 0.5, excuse me. Adding the 0.5 to the cupola. I believe these can actually oscillate so they can rotate themselves. So you can swing this around any way you want really. We get a couple of jerry cans. And our final step is our commander, 24. So it's a 24 step build, each build, oh sorry, it's a 26 step, uh, tw uh, step 25 is the adding of the um, uh, the the dust skirts, I tend to keep these off, I really don't like them, um, however I will be building a Sherman 1 from Al Alamein and I will probably add them because I think the British ones kind of it suits them for some reason, I don't know why, but I just, I tend not to like adding the skirts, and most of the photographs I've seen they tend to be left off anyway, especially with American ones. Then we get our tow cable, that's supplied, a piece of string. And then 26 is just mounting the turret to the hull. So probably a couple of hours worth of building, you probably get this done in an afternoon if you're a fast builder. So let's actually have a look at our marking uh, collet. So we get a pretty basic marking call out for this um, machine, uh, for this model. So we have uh, Dix Dixie Bell, H Company, 3rd Battalion, 1st Armour, Tunisia, February 43, so it's probably a Kesserine. Um, it has a really cool, I think this is the one that's um, depicted, excuse me, this is one that's depicted in the box art. It has that lovely yellow band that goes around the turret, gives the German gunner something to aim on. Um, Pretty nice, and then we have 13th Armour Regiment, 1st Division, Italy, 43. Very basic one, this one is just, uh, it's just pretty much, um, oh, okay. So it's got a bit of like a white um, undercut to it here, so that they sprayed a little bit of white to the bottom of the, um, the transmission cover as well as the bottom of the gun barrel for some reason. God only knows why. And then we have Forget It, F Company, 66th Armour Edge, 2nd Armour Division, Oran, 43. And this is actually kind of a cool one. It's got like a, um, a flat yellow roof to it, probably for um, uh, friend or foe um, aircraft recognition. And that's a little bit interesting. I quite like that one, actually. I'd probably go for the first option with the yellow band. It's either going to be that one or it's going to be this this one here. So I'm not entirely sure. But again, it's pretty simple um, marking options. It is disturbing after all. No, they're not too um, outrageous with their camo schemes. Unless it's USMC one, that they have deadly camouflage schemes. Okay, let's have a look at the parts. So I'm actually going on and bag these as we go. So this is the state they come in, their own little bags. They are staple. Some guys don't like that. They think it damages the parts. In my entire experience of model making, it's never done shit to a model. So, we have our transmission cover. Let's pull this in for super close action. Okay, so we have our transmission cover. Detail is nice. So we have, okay, so we'll start here. We have our, where are we? We have our commander's cupola. Some nice cast and um, forge marks on them. That's nice. Um, Sherman should be full of casting and, and forge numbering everywhere. If you, um, they're, they're quite heavily marked, so um, if you can get your hands on some aftermarket like um, Archer transfers with the cast um, numbering, I would strongly recommend it if you want to kind of super detail these kits. So nice detail here, I'm not seeing any flash as we've come to expect. We have our armor, applique armor for the cheek and for the, um, the whole side. So this immediately shows me that this is not wet storage, this is dry ammunition storage. So later on in Sherman's development, um, the designers quickly realized that the ammunition, it wasn't, everyone seemed to think it was the petrol engines that used to cause the 
um, determined to explode. Nine times out of ten was the ammunition because it was not protected. So in a way to fix this in later variants of M4, they um, added a mixture of antifreeze and water, if I remember correctly, and that was designed to be like a fire retardant to stop the ammunition from go cooking off immediately and give the crew time to get out. But, but before that was brought in, they did some kind of basic um, ad hoc modification by adding some cheek and hull armor around the ammunition storage. Didn't, it, it, it did a little, but didn't really solve the problem until the wet storage came in. So that immediately tells us this is wet storage. Again, there's exceptions every rule, but that's one of the easiest ways to identify. We have a jig here for for um, shaping the photo etch headlight mounts. Very clever. I'm really happy you did that because the um, the headlight mounts are a little bit tricky to form. We have some of our um, final drive assembly here for the return idler or return roller, should I, or sorry, idler, should I say? We have some entrenching tools, or should I say, uh, pioneer tools. Very nice detail. The 1919 machine guns look pretty damn nice. Nice detail on them. Then we have our our um, transmission cover. Again, with the appropriate forge markings. I'm not seeing any arsenal markings on this. There should be. Okay, but there's, there's still um, cast numbering there, which is important. Final drives are well done. Again, nice, and nice cast detail on them. <clears throat> However, I'm, I'm going to go back and actually add more to it because that should be a bit rougher. But at least they've added the basic stuff in. So again, pretty nice. It's a Sherman, that's all I have to say. Either way, I'm not seeing any type of molding defects or um, sink marks or flashing. So this sprue has our um, mud skirts or dust skirts. Big, ugly sheet metal jobs. I really dislike these. I, I probably won't use them except on my main one because it's kind of... It's synonymous with them and it's a bit different, so I might use on that. We have our two-piece barrel, pretty nice. Um, this, this should be fine to recover. Um, when we get to the video building list, I'll, I'll show it, but uh, it shouldn't be a problem. We have some oil drums, nice. Um, some uh, air fans. Then we actually have the direct fission ports themselves for the driver and co-driver. We have the mounting brackets for the... And skirts. We have a 50 caliber. Oh, sorry. We have a 50 caliber um, ammunition box. But looks at it. There seems to be one, or is it a guest storage box? Our antenna mount that looks almost like the British one. Yeah, it's a British antenna mount. I have a sneaky suspicion <clears throat> that the Sherman 1 a la the main version is just basically this kit with this British decals. But her sprue, this fell off. This is the very, very early um, transmission cover, I believe. I think it is. Um, I think the easiest way to tell it apart if it has got a lip here. I think that's the very early one. Or is the other one high on? Where's the other one? Yeah, because it's like the one piece um, cast one. So I don't know which one we're going to be using. Again, I'm not seeing any casting numbers or foundry marks on it. So that will have to be added in later. Transmission covers <clears throat> um, for that, or trans, uh, final drive housings for the transmission cover. We have our gun mantlets, one with the splash shields, one without. Uh, our gun mantlet. Again, some very basic cast texture. Not seeing any numbering on these either, there should be. These are quite small little gripes, but they are kind of important for Sherman because that's kind of part of the character of the Sherman. We have our American style radio, radio mount, our um, the armoured caps for the um, uh, for the radio positions, radio pots that would be on the hull, if I want to make a command variant I believe. A little seat to that probably for the turret. We have the travel lock for the 50 caliber machine gun. A little bit of flashing on this piece here, that looks a little bit like a headlight. So in this one there's only a point of taking this out. We have some jerry cans, one piece slide mold design by the looks of it, very nice. And then in this one, we have our 50 caliber machine gun or a 0.5 heavy H HMG. We have our spare barrels, our two versions of the mount barrel. The cooling jacket is hollow, which is, if you really wanted it, you could actually leave that, like almost how the guys that they're stripping down the gun to clean it, which is kind of cool. Gives you a bit of diorama possibility. And then we have the early version 50 round drum magazine. 
pretty nice normally point on bag in them. We all know what 50 caliber machine guns look like. Then we have this big bag of bogies and wheels. Three of them, so can I look at one? So we have our our hollow spoke wheels and the very early pattern bogies with the centralized return roller. Very cool. I can't think of the name, um, what designation these are off the top of my head. I would put it, uh, I'll have a pop up at this point in the video because uh, it's a long um, string of numbers which I can never remember because I'm shit. Very nice. I'm get it out of the bag, I'll be doing all right. Here we go. So the eagle-eyed amongst you will immediately recognize these as hull parts and you'll be right. So here's our main um, hull sides. Again, these are like a multi-plate hull assembly. Bit, bit like the real thing, these are how they were put together in real life. But they're going to be a little bit tricky to put together because when I sw swing these over on the other side, you'll see that they don't have very, very rigid guidelines. As in the lips that they've built to help you align things are kind of shallow, so that could be problematic. So again, really nice rivet detail. Not a lot to say here. We have our engine deck and with um, the doors that can be modeled open or shut if, oh sorry, that's what I showed you. So we have our engine deck, doors can be molded open or shut which is nice. So you can, if you buy an aftermarket engine you can display it. We do have full detail on the um, lower hull. I'm not really too interested in, in that type of stuff to be honest with you. Like, unless you're like modeling the thing that's on its side or it's rolled into a ditch or something like that, you're never going to see that shit anyway. So, yeah, I don't know. We have our sponsons. Again, a little bit of detail on the sponsons, a few like access panels and drainage plugs and what have you. Again, I'm sorry that's kind of reflecting the way it is, it's just the way the light is today. Again, really nice detail. A little bit of flashing here on the lo lower hull, and that's about it, but it's actually even on the piece itself. It's the transition between the sprue and the actual um, plastic. So we have our hull and turret pieces and these are the really really lovely cast holes. I absolutely adore these. I just love that kind of, it's almost like the shoulders and the swept back, it's absolutely beautiful. It's probably my favourite ferry into Sherman is the A1. It's a really nice looking machine. It does have texturing. You know what I mean, I can see it, and if I run my nail over it, you can hear it. Um, does it need a bit more? Well, that's really up to you as a modeler. You can add a bit more if you really wish. Um, I might add a little bit, but again, I don't want to overwork this either. Again, I'm not seeing the casting numbers. There should be a foundry mark here somewhere, and I don't see it, which is a little bit of a shame. But it's something that can be easily added on later. The reason I keep going on about them is they are kind of important to the Sherman if you're trying to make them look accurate. As every, I think it's the seven foundries that made these machines, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. I haven't I looked at my notes in a little while. But each one of them would have their own unique mark. Just like the Chrysler plant or have you, the locomotive works or the Pacific Air or whatever. So then we have our one piece upper hull for the, or upper turret. This appears to be a low bustle. Again, not really a lot of cast texture. You might have to come back and add a bit more cast texture to this. And then we have our turret ring. Not really much to say there, other than very nice. Let's quickly get these out of the way. We have our clear pieces for the periscopes and lenses. Uh, we get a little sheet of rubber, which we cut into little squares to put into the buggies to get them actual functional suspension and poly caps. Not gonna take it out of the bags, no point. And then we have a little bag of accessories or just kind of small bits and bobs. So we get another bit of applique armor for the side of the hull. Again, to protect the ammunition. We get a British British style ex fire extinguisher. So again, there's probably gonna be a lot of common parts with the British variants in this box. We have our solid plastic lenses and periscopes, but these can be replaced with the clear parts. Really fine spring here for the, um, I imagine that's from the hatches, from the retaining lugs. Our fuel and water caps are pretty nicely done. Bit of ah, uh, bit of damage on the where is it? Fuck where? Where am I? 
bit of damage on this headlight mount. That's a damn shame. But to be honest with you, it's bound to happen the way these things are packaged and they might need to have a bit of a screw gate that goes over this to protect it as these are very fragile. Exactly the same on this sprue as they are copies of each other. So air scrubbers, two versions, depending on what fairings you're building. Our upper deck for the engine access panels on the top of the hull, our exhaust deflectors. Crewman is pretty nice, actually pretty flashy for some reason, but the face is pretty nice. You could probably use him out of the box, you wouldn't even have to replace his head unless you wanted to. No, he's, he's very workable, that's nice. He's usable. Again, some very, very fragile um, headlight covers. And that's really it on that sprue. And then the last sprue then is our idlers and dry sprockets. So we get some nice detail here. We get like the Tutus, um um final drive on the, the sprocket. Nice. We get two versions of idler. Um, we get the solid um, hub one and we get the uh, hollow spokes. It's up to yourself which one you want to use. And we get two versions of um, dry sprocket. So we do have options. Very nice. And then there was these things. Which, if you remember the Firefly, I wasn't entirely sure what the hell these things were for. And these are actually designed that Tasker or Suka Models produces bogies sets on their own. And these are designed to be able to fit into other manufacturers' lower hull tubs, so you can put install their um, their suspension. Very clever, that actually. So very, very light rubber, which is important because that means we can uh, mold them quite nice. These are actually pretty nice. There's a little bit of pin marking on them, which could be really tricky to remove. Yeah. So the clean up of these is going to be an absolute bitch. <laughs> I don't know why they do that because it's so hard to clean these really soft rubber parts. So there you have my inbox review of Asuka Models M4A1 Sherman Direct Fission Type. Um, in all this is a hell of a nice kit. Looking forward to building it up. It should be quite fun. So thanks for watching. Stay safe and catch you in the next one. Bye bye.